welcome back to another awesome video. If you're shopping for a vintage tape deck, how do you know when you're ready to buy it or not? I don't know. Today you can benefit from our electronics hoarding problem. Wait, what? Because <laughs> we're going to look at 20 cassette decks from our collection and give you an opinion on each one. We're going to keep every tape deck segment down to 30 seconds, no more. Just keep in mind... So are we going to end up on that hoarder show? No. Okay. Keep in mind, these are our opinions based on the samples we have. Let's get started with one we haven't done a video on, the Sharp RT3388A. How old do you think this thing is? Old as the Alien movie. Yeah, close. It's from 1978. It's the computer control cassette deck. Looks like they just sort of jammed a pocket calculator in there. And that's pretty much the selling point there is that you can use it to, as a timer to turn uh, your radio off and on, record programs, and it has music search. These decks typically have easily fixed mechanical problems, but the computer in this one is dead. And that's almost impossible to fix. So for that reason, I do not recommend this deck. One star. <laughs> Next time you got the gimmies. I didn't know the chipmunks had a radio station. Yeah. This is a Marantz. Now, Marantz equipment is generally higher priced, the so-called Marantz tax. So if you buy this one, keep in mind, other than the speed control, there's no really, really fancy features. It's a very basic deck. And if you want to hear the sound quality, look at our other video where we compared the high and low speeds. We did direct feed on that. It's a very good quality cassette deck, easy to swap out the belts, easy to repair. Uh, it's a good one. During the last six years at Capital Credit Union, we've been There's an exciting tape for you. It's been... And we've done two videos of this, and one in which I transplanted the entire ta tape mechanism. Spectro peak indicator is cool. It's got some nice lights over here, but the uh, tape mechanism is probably more trouble than it's worth. If I was going to build an audio component and have a Raspberry Pi and maybe replace this with a screen, it would be cool to keep that intact. Nice looking, but hard maintenance, so I would have to say don't recommend buying this to people. Okay. Rock and roll hits of the 70s, star 98 FM. And Queen, yeah, another one. Bites you can stop going. This is a TAC R55. 555. 555. I was not a big fan of the user interface initially. It's kind of sluggish and music search is artificially restricted. However, it's really grown on me. I feel like it's easy to repair the belt. Uh, the sound quality is pretty solid and we were able to remove the restriction on the music search. I would recommend it. If the electronics are in good condition, go for it. If not, stay away. Old Mother Goose, when she okay, wanted to wander, rode reject. through the air on a very fine gander. Mother oh, reject. I think our initial video was demonetized because we used some copyrighted music to test it, but this is just rare. I mean, I never saw anything like this growing up during the cassette era. Can't keep up with uh, mo more modern decks for, as far as fidelity or, or sound quality, but uh, I would say buy this if you have the opportunity. It's just such a rare collector's item. Go watch our other video about it. Yes, and subscribe. This is the Mitsubishi DT-156 tape changer. Of our tape changers, this is probably the slowest tape changer we own. But there's an old saying, slow and steady wins the race. This one did not need any repairs. You know, I, if you look at the video, there's some things I don't like about the way it works and the speed. Uh, I like the... Uh I like I keep changing tapes. Uh, I think if you can get it for maybe $50, that's probably a good deal. But it's just not that exciting. But I'd say it's a maybe. If you like it, you know, go yeah. for it. This is the Techniques 222, M222. It does a lot of stuff. However, there's some things I don't like about the user interface. For example, all the buttons look identical, and then you got music search on one side, but not on the other. If you buy this, you're signing up for a very complex three belt change. It's got these mechanical soft touch controls, so. But it sounds good, and if the price is right, I'd, I'd give this one a strong mate. Hey, the price is right, like the TV show. Yeah, if the price is right, I, I'd say go for it, but this is a pretty much a maybe. From the Pioneer CTWM62R, six tapes over here. One over there. It's my favorite tape changer. It the randomizes fast. Everything about it is fast. It has all the features you need from cassette, Dolby, HX Pro, everything. Despite the fact that it's black plastic, still a sounds good. I like this. I like this Wait, deck. Yeah, six tapes in this cool changer mechanism. We did a video on this. I don't know what else to say about it. I like it. You that far though. This is the JVC. KDA3. This is probably the most reliable JVC I have. It sounds good. It looks great with these VU meters. This is probably one of my top 10 tape decks. Got the manual mechanical controls. I've not had to do a thing with it. It's been well cared for. It's 1979 model. Uh, not much to say about this. I recommend it. I say this one's a buy because of the VU meters and the reliability. Yeah, the, G the VU meters are very bright. Yeah. So this one has pitch control, which lets you vary the speed. 
Uh, it is a Sony, got the construction of a tin can in plastic. What this lacks in style, it makes up for in features. Ton of features. The reason I keep this around is it's a good workhorse. If I need to digitize a bunch of tapes, this would be the deck I'd use because it's just simply no use on this thing. Other than that, not much spectacular here. I wouldn't go out of my way to spend a lot of money on this, but it is a full featured uh, cassette deck. This is the JVC TW, TDW801. This was my own personal cassette deck throughout much of the 1990s. It is a good sounding JVC deck. The key feature is it records on both sides, so you can record uh, the same CD or relay record one than the other. Unfortunately, it's got plastic clutches which wear out. I had to end up replacing those. Uh, good sounding, but I don't recommend it due to the just sort of the plastic nature of the 1990s. $299. $229 originally. The Blau Plunked. Yes, the Blau Plunked. The Blau Plunked Micronic MC60. This originally came out as part of a system. This is definitely a style purchase. It doesn't have a lot of extra features and it's hard to work on. So I'd say, you know, if you get one, eh, might be fun to play with. Has that cool open face loading system. Like the, that movie. Yes, MacGruber made fun of Blau Plunked. It's probably me from the upcoming Lethal Weapon 3, and it's a world premiere. Here I sting. The realistic SCP-25. From an investment point of view, this doesn't make sense. Probably either in the 80s when it came out or now. Uh, the belt is hard to find, but it, ju it just doesn't have a lot of features. It's, uh, it seems like a neat little thing, but better in theory than in practice. I'd say stay away from this one due to the mechanical complexity and the motor runs all the time. Bio Chord 6000. Yeah, the Bio Chord 6000, it sounds great. We did a video on it, which was kind of tongue in cheek, and we also tried to compare Bang & Olsen to Apple. It I mean, it sounds awesome. It just takes up so much space. It takes up so much horizontal space, you can't stack anything on top of it. Uh, this one was easy to work on, but not all Bang & Olsen decks are. Some of them are complicated, but it's just almost like a work of art instead of a cassette deck. How do you play it? You press that button. Okay, this is a very unusual tape deck. It's a Pioneer. It is a CTF 2121, sort of that pre mid 70s. So the mechanism and the electronics are probably not an uh, older style. I probably wouldn't recommend it for like pure sound quality, but it's very unique. These buttons let you go between any mode. Like normally I would do be rewinding and then stopping and then fast forwarding. This lets you go directly between rewind and fast forward, which feels like you're going down the highway and you shift the car into reverse, which doesn't feel natural. This is the TAC 10 stereo cassette deck. Tape decks from the early 70s, late 60s. I don't rec recommend these because the sound quality wise, it was great for the era it was in. Looks kind of cool, but it's got the older piano key style, older mechanism. The motor just runs all the time. So as long as this thing is on, the motor is running. Uh, just old, too old technology for me. So wouldn't really recommend this. We just did a video on this Sony, so not going to say a lot about this. Really want to talk more about this category of cassette decks. These cassette decks are ones that have been liberated from a system and maybe don't have standard hookups. You can get these really uh, at a discounted rate. Like I think we had a Yamaha also that had a proprietary connector and a lot of times you can just sort of add on regular connectors and get these working again. I would recommend something like this maybe for more of an advanced sort of electronics person, but it can be a good deal. This is the Sanyo RDS45. This is a value cassette deck. You know, to be honest, it's got all the features. It's got metal, Dolby noise reduction, music search. The only drawback is the mechanical controls. Cool. Looks interesting. Sort of uh, what I would say punching above its weight. But if you can find one of these in good condition to the good price, this is actually a really good value. So uh, sounds okay. Um, anyway, that's that. That's that. <laughs> This is the Yamaha K960. If you want to hear how good it sounds with DBX, go watch our video with opens with an audio sample. This is, we're down to the top two, so we saved the best for last. It's hard to choose between them. This probably could be number one very easily, but this is one of my favorite cassette decks. I would definitely suggest buying it, but I'm not going to sell you this one. It has got a lot of features. It's very responsive. Wait, it's people just, have said that before? What? They've commented on the video saying they want to buy this? Yeah, not this one, but other ones, yeah. 
Very responsive. The controls have a great, great feel to them. Okay. Very stylish. Got the hidden door. Got all sorts of features. Doesn't have music search, but does have a wired remote. As always, before that countdown begins, here's a... He's only as directed. We're starting... Pioneer CTF 650. This is my favorite cassette deck, ergonomically at least, of all my cassette decks. Everything from the spacing of the buttons to the feel of the controls. This line of Pioneer tape decks is highly sought after usually very expensive used uh it's called the blue line it's called the flora scan line because of the blue vu meters but everything about it is really good the only drawback it's my favorite one if it was new it would i would use it all the time the problem is this is kind of worn out and pretty much all of these you can find are worn out yet they still command a very high price someday i hope to do a full restoration on this right now it's just sort of sitting here doesn't get a lot of use it just is a very very good cool machine and this this is my number one favorite recommended cassette deck if you can get one of these this one only costs like 20 bucks which is a great deal i think these are going for extreme prices if to try to get this line of cassette decks nowadays but anyway that's about it for our review of 20 tape, tape decks so uh, we'll see you next time see you next time for another awesome video